Yeah, he will. Amen. That's good, ma'am. That's good. All right. Hallelujah. That was good. I've never heard that song before. That song had power in it. Amen. Would you turn the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 with me, please, this morning? Verse 26, if you'd like to stand, we read God's infallible Word. Amen. Right. If it's God's Word, it's infallible, isn't it? Yep. It certainly yep. is. We received it as it is, the Word of God, not as the Word of men, the Apostle said. In Luke chapter number 1 and verse 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel said unto her, and the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, Thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Father, Lord God, this is your word that I hold before me. Heavenly Father, here long before I ever showed up, God, this word is eternal. And now, Lord, give me grace to preach it this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. And I'm sure time and again throughout your life you've read that, had it read to you. This is the account given by Luke of the angel Gabriel announcing to Mary that she would have a son. The book of Luke records for us in detail so many things about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So does Matthew. The reason Matthew and Luke take up the details associated with the birth of Christ because both of these Gospels, Matthew and Luke, give a genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're concerned with where He came from and who He is. The Gospel of John has no genealogy because the Lord Jesus... Well, it does have a genealogy in a sense because it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what John's concerned with. He wants you to understand Jesus Christ is God. And therefore we know that John's burden was to present Him as the High and Holy One that is from everlasting Amen. to everlasting. Luke gives us the genealogy of Christ as it relates to His manhood because he traces Him back in the genealogy later on in this same book all the way back to Adam, who was the Son of God. So the manhood of Jesus Christ is dealt with here in the Gospel of Luke. And notice carefully, he said, You shall call His name Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sins. Therefore, the earthly name of the Word of God that is from everlasting to everlasting is Jesus. Matthew deals with this birth, and he deals with this birth in the royal character, having to do with tracing Him all the way back as the Son of David giving his credentials that one day he is literally destined to rule upon the throne of David. He is the king. Right. And Matthew gives the genealogy of the king. He does not trace him back to Adam, but he traces him back to David, yeah. the monarch, the king, the earthly throne that God gave David and said in perpetuity, there shall never fail a man to sit upon this throne. Right. God will see to it that Jesus Christ 
sits on the throne of David. He has not sat on that throne yet. It is not a spiritual throne in the sense that you explain it away. It is a real literal throne. This is one more reason that I'm premillennial. I believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back and sit on a real throne right here on this earth and rule and reign over the house of David as the Bible says that he would. But the book of Luke deals with his manhood. It has to do with the fact that a man has been born. A man child has been brought into this world. He announces that birth and says to Mary, You shall conceive and bear a son, and you'll call his name Jesus. That name Jesus therefore goes down in history as the one name said more than any name on the face of this earth, bar none. The name of Jesus has risen to the heavens. It's the name of Jesus that men have on their lips when they go into battle. It's the name of Jesus that women have on their lips when they bear children. And it is the name of Jesus as we go out into eternity and face the dark night as we leave this world and light opens for us. It's the name of Jesus when the sinner bows on his knees and calls upon God to be merciful to him a sinner and wash his sins away. It's the name of Jesus that's on his heart for he's the savior he's the friend of sinners and it is the blood of Christ is the only thing that can wash the sins of a man away amen and so he said call his name Jesus Jesus the man that can save here in the book of Luke chapter number one we read about a miracle taking place It's something that had never happened before, and it'll never happen again. It was an event in time that happened one time, never to be repeated. My friend, it was the birth of God's man, the God-man who came on this earth 2,000 years ago. Each year at this time, we set aside a time to recognize the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's certainly nothing wrong with setting aside a time to honor the birth of Jesus Christ. And so we think about the fact that He came into this world. What does it mean? What are we talking about when we say the birth of Jesus Christ? Why is that important to us? It has far more to do with the simply taking your calendar and go back and say it's 2008 on Odomini. It has far more to do with days and the counting of time. When we talk about the birth of Jesus Christ, we talk about an event that cannot be ignored. I don't care where you live, who you are. The calendar set to it. Mankind knows about about it. And so here we preach about the birth of Jesus Christ. First of all, I want you to notice that it is a miraculous thing. It is a miracle. It is stepping forth from eternity into time. It is God doing something that has never been done before. The nature of a miracle is something that happens that defies natural laws. It cannot be judged. It cannot be measured by what we understand naturally. It is higher than that. It is above that. A miracle is something that originates from God and the birth of Jesus Christ was a miraculous birth for it is a virgin birth and that defies the laws of nature there's no way naturally it can be explained there's no way to reproduce it it is the birth of a man it's the God man born of a virgin it is a miraculous birth somebody comes along and says she will have preacher that all happened in the age of miracles there is no such thing as an age of miracles that doesn't you don't find defy you to find that in the Bible from Genesis to the book of Revelation the Bible is full of miracles and the same God yesterday today and forever still lives in glory. His word is still as powerful today as it always has been. Let that word enter into your soul. You have received a miraculous word. It did not originate from this earth. It came down from above. The word of God is such a powerful thing that when it enters into the heart of a human being, it is life itself. Not only is it life, but it is eternal life. And not only is it life, but it's light. That individual is no longer scratching around asking for human wisdom seeking what men have to say but the entrance of thy word giveth life amen it giveth light it is the path that we walk on his word is a powerful thing it transforms the individual it changes him it takes him out of this earth and lifts his mind to a higher plane and so Mary said let it be done to thy handmaid according to thy word when she received what God had to say about her condition, the birth of Jesus Christ would come nine months later. 
When Mary said that day, let it be according to thy word, she was receiving the engrafted word. She was receiving a powerful thing, for it issued forth from the mouth of God, from the life of God, from the breath of God, from the soul of God, from the mind of God, from the very being of God. His word is a powerful thing. So the Bible says here that this man child was born. The age of miracles is still around friend a miracle is something that you can receive from God if you can receive his word every last soul in this house if you've been born again you're a miracle you better believe it nature cannot produce what happened inside you it did not originate of this earth it was not produced in you by philosophy psychology did not fashion you into what you are you were not educated into that the new birth is a miraculous thing that the natural man cannot understand. That's why the Bible said, He that is born of the flesh persecutes he that is born of the Spirit and still does to this very day. Religion is the enemy of the new birth. Always has been, always will be. We'll never understand it, never know it, never have anything to do with it, have no contact with it. But a miracle is something that still goes on. The other night, my friend, when Renee had been in, in delivery for a whole day and she was stuck, she couldn't go forward. She couldn't have this baby. And so my friend we gathered around her bed began to cry out to God. We were praying for a miracle. We were crying for the eternal God to intervene in this world. And when we started praying with her her contractions immediately got stronger. Immediately right on the spot. And she'd been all day long in that condition. Doctors didn't do it. Who did it preacher? God did it. He still performs miracles. And my friend, he doesn't buy them or sell them. He's no respecter of persons. Anybody in this house today that's willing to believe God and receive His Word into your soul, you've received in your soul the eternal Word of God. And if you'll get on your face and cry out to Him, you'll be amazed at what He can do. He still works miracles today. Say, I've tried and tried and tried and tried, preacher. I've turned over every leaf you can find. I've sought every counsel on the face of this earth. And I still have the same old hell following me. Same old habits, same old addictions. Same old garbage just hangs on. And I can't seem to shake it off. No, you can't. I might as well say the truth to you right now. You can't. This earth has power that is unbelievable on your flesh. Your flesh originated from this earth. Your flesh started here. This is all it's ever known. But let me tell you something. He shall save his people from their sins, it says in the book of Luke chapter number 1. The name of Jesus is the most powerful name on the face of this earth. It's not a, it's not a magical name. This has nothing to do with sorcery. It has nothing to do with a flim-flam religious setup. It has to do with the fact that He's a living Savior that can hear you call upon His name. If you call upon His name and receive the engrafted Word that I'm preaching, if you receive what God says about your condition and call on His name, receiving from God that I'm a sinner, that I'm lost, that I need salvation, that Word will work faith in your soul and save you right on the spot. And the name of Jesus can set you free and break the bonds and open the gates and make a new creature out of you in Christ Jesus, amen, as he has for millions before you that have walked on this old dirty place. He has saved them by their millions. I say even probably billions before we ever showed up. There is power in that name. When that dear soul got up this morning a few minutes ago, that blessed me. Christmas is a gift wrapped up, amen. It's the love of God sending forth His Son. That's what we're here about today. That's the greatest gift of all gifts is when God loved man enough to send His Son. And Jesus Christ was born so He could die. It was a miraculous birth. There's no way to explain it. Forget your reasoning and forget your logic. It is eternity intervening in time. Defying all the laws of nature. 
because it is set by a higher law. It is the law of God, the Creator, who gave the laws of nature. And the lawgiver can at any time he pleases defy the law he gave. For the lawgiver is greater than the natural law that he set in motion. All he has to do is speak a word and a whole new world will come into existence. That's all he's got to do. All he had to do in 1973 was to say a word. He's my son today. And glory to God. I became his son by the new birth. So when I look at Luke chapter number one, the birth of Jesus Christ and his mother Mary, I say to myself, my, 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 we have to take it as what it says. It is someone reaching out from above down to us below in the light into our darkness from life into death from God into his creatures. And he sent his son. Boy, I can't say to you, and it's morning, if you're looking for something greater, there is nothing greater. If you're trying to find some deeper truth, there is no deeper truth. It is a profound thing to think that God loves you in spite of yourself. And boy, does He ever, in spite of ourselves. I want you to notice something about this text that I really like. It says right here that He says... For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And notice carefully, And the angel departed from her. Notice her part in the miracle. Please notice. Mary could have snubbed up and said, Hold on a minute. You realize if I get pregnant, What my culture is going to do to me? Why, if I come out of here impregnated and have no husband, why, they have my husband uh, to be that I'm a spouse to, will find out about this and have me stoned to death. Right. She could have said, well, you're passing a death sentence on me. And not only that, she could have said, what do you mean a virgin shall conceive? Why, what are we doing here? Yes. Here's God presenting something to her that literally blows her mind. Some marvelous, wonderful thing that is beyond human understanding and grasp. And yet it became a reality for her because she received the Word of God. Amen. How many of you got to a certain point in your life with God? When you hungered for Him and you wanted His touch, you believed Him, you walked with Him. And then somewhere along the line, the old doctrine of unbelief began to take root in your soul. And now you're afraid to trust God, afraid to try Him, afraid to go with Him, afraid, afraid, afraid. Fear hath torment. And fear will undermine your faith. I get a, I'm a marvel. I'm amazed today when I see how God does things. I see how He heals people. I see how He delivers people. I see how He intervened like He did at that hospital the other night. God came in that room. God touched that young woman right there. And God said, we're going to have a little boy here in a little while. I got up the next morning. You may think I'm a fool. You go ahead. I don't care for what you think. I got up the next morning. I'd been there and I got up the next morning and God said, there's a little boy over there and he was born this morning. How would I know that? How would I know that? Except the voice of the Almighty. That was God. Maybe God was saying, since you did it, went over there and did what I told you to do. What did he tell you to do, preacher? I walked up to her bed and I prayed. Took her by the hand. I said, Renee, let's pray. We prayed. I stuck back for a moment and we stood there for a little while and talked. God said, now I'm not done. He said, I want you to gather everybody in this room together and get them right here over the top of this bed. And I said, all right, everybody in here, let's get over the top of this bed. Let's hold hands. And we prayed the next time. And the second time when we prayed, the power of God came into that place. God's spirit began to move in there. He brought life in that room. Because I was obedient to what he told me to do. Sometimes I think to myself, Lord, are you going to make a fool out of me? Every once in a while, God says, do this, do that. He'll tell me something to do. And I think, now what's going on here? And then I say to myself, when I was in my prayer closet the other day, the Lord said to me, he said, son, he said, I'll use you, but you be obedient to what I tell you to do. Don't worry about understanding it. Don't worry about explaining it. Don't worry about me telling you ahead of time all I'm going to do. Just be obedient to do what I tell you to do. All right, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do what you tell me to do. I'll hear your voice. I'll pray to you, talk to you, listen to you, because I'd rather die than not be walking with you. God, a few days ago, said, now, son, 
You told me you wanted to know my voice. I said, hey, sir, Lord, I want to know your voice. You're going to drive me insane. I'm going to go crazy hearing all this stuff in my head. If I don't know it's your voice, there's no way a man can walk with God. If you hear this and you hear that and you don't know it's the voice of God. I said, Lord God, I've got to know it's you talking to me. He said, that's fine, son. And for the next two days, I didn't hear a thing. And I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It was hell for me. Nothing. For the next two days, I go in my closet, shut the door, and say, Lord, I'll hear something. Lord God, I love you. Quiet. Lord, I'm, Lord I, want you to, I, want you, I want you to help me. Lord, I need help. I, and nothing but quiet. And for the next two days, quiet, quiet. Heaven had closed off. And then finally, at the end of two days, I heard a voice move across my soul. And he said, now, son, remember, you wanted to know my voice. I said, yes, I do. He said, you'll know it. You'll know it's not your brain talking to you. And you'll know it when it's a devil talking to you. And then the next day he began to move and the Spirit of God moved upon my soul. I could feel His glory in my heart. And that voice came back again. And that voice began to speak to me. And I came out of that prayer closet with a big grin across my face just like that. With glory in my soul. Because God was talking to me again. I couldn't stand it. Two days and no God. Two days and no voice. Two days and no communion. I'd be dead now. If I wasn't in that closet talking to the Lord. I want Him in my soul. I want His power in my life. I want to hear God. And if I don't hear from Him, I can't live. I can't make it. I can't go. You can't believe. You can't imagine. How that blessed my soul when I looked up there at that screen on that monitor. And I see the contractions. They're getting harder already. Right there instantaneously. When we had prayed, God began to move. In that room, would God tell you to walk and put your hand on somebody's head and get down next to them and say, let's pray together? Would you do it? If God told you to hand somebody a track and tell them how the Lord loved them, would you do it? If God spoke to your heart and said obedience is better than sacrifice, obedience is the greatest thing He can have from you. Would you live a life of obedience before the Lord? This young woman said, be it so unto me. Help with all the fear. Don't care what happens to me. Be it so unto me. She's not living in Brooklyn. She's not living in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. She's not living in a whorehouse. This is a young Jewish girl living in a society that could have taken her and stunned her to death. You can't imagine. You've got to think about this for a moment. The culture of ancient Judaism 2,000 years ago is so far removed from us as the heavens is right, from the right. earth. Amen. Amen. Yep. A young girl today, 14, 15, 16 years old, that is a virgin, gets mocked. Yeah. Right, right, man. Amen. Yep, yep. They mock her and make fun of her. Yes, sir. Yep. They drag her through the dirt and try to drag her down virginity and motherhood and womanhood and chastity and that which is decent and that which is good is a scourge and an off-scouring to this society. Amen. 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 But 2,000 years ago it was just the reverse. It was honorable and a thing to be desired. It was the life of these people. And here's a girl that God speaks to and He doesn't speak to anyone else. Gabriel brought the message from the Lord and said, This is for you, Mary. You're going to conceive and bear a son. She had to receive what God said. I believe with all of my heart, I do really believe it, that He's speaking to some of you. And in secret, you'll not dare tell anybody. But when you've been going in your prayer closet and shutting that door and getting on your face before God, you've been hearing stuff. And sometimes he'll do it this way. He'll start talking to you and just give you little tidbits here and there and say, this is going to happen in a few days. And it happens and blows your mind. He tells you something. And when it happens, you say to yourself, where's this coming from? He's initiating you, preparing you. He's letting you know he's alive and he's real and he's there and he's concerned with your life. He knows what's going on. Amen. Back in the early 1900s, an old hill boy around here from East Tennessee came out of the mountains, mud all over his shoes. Back in the early 1900s, he said, this town's going to be underwater one day and there's going to be a dam covering it. That was long before TVA was ever existed or even mentioned. Sure enough, friend, Loyston went underwater. 
There was a dam put up at Norris, and a huge lake covers that area today. How did he know that? He knew it because God told him. That's how he knew it. God will tell you if you listen to him. If you get in there and talk to God, he'll talk to you. Let's roll off said men stop talking to God when God stops talking to them. I agree with you, Brother Roloff. You know what the problem is? We're not like Mary when she listened to Gabriel and he spoke to her and said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Well, they could have said, Well, you lunatic, here you are with a child, here you are pregnant. Our commandments tell us that you have played the whore and you need to be stoned to death because according to the written word of God, you are a profligate. How could she have answered it? How could she have defended herself? Think about it. To this day, the Jews say that Jesus Christ is Ben Pantera's son. Right. Their Talmud teaches that Jesus Christ is the illegitimate son of a Roman soldier. They deny the virgin birth. The Jews deny the virgin birth because they teach their children that this man, boy, born in Bethlehem was illegitimate. Even in his lifetime, the Pharisees cast to his face, said, We be not born of fornication like you are. Yeah. We Gentiles need to understand something. Is he virgin born or not? Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, don't go ask a rabbi. Right, right. And don't go ask a liberal. Amen. Amen. Who told you he was virgin born? Yes, sir. Amen. This book did. Amen. Amen, brother. Yep. Why? Because this book is the book of God. Yep. Amen. Yep. Amen, brother. Amen. Well, that's just what you believe. Yeah, but you didn't know me before I got saved. Right. Amen. Amen. Your greatest weapon against the world is the new birth. Yep. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. There's a man on the mission field that used to run a whorehouse. Yep. Amen. That's strong. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. He didn't straighten up. He became a new creature. Yes, sir. Amen, brother. Amen. Because Christ is virgin born. Amen. Amen. If the Lord Jesus Christ is not virgin born, the New Testament is a lie. Amen. Yep. You're false witnesses of God. Yep. And there's no power in this book. Why do you play with drug addicts? Why do you offer them a false hope? Why do you tell them to pray to a God that doesn't hear them? If Christ is not risen from the dead, and He's not virgin born, and yet His virgin birth went against everything the Jews held sacred. Christ is alive. Virgin born. I'm glad Mary believed the angel. I'm glad Mary accepted the word of God. And sometimes God will begin to move in your heart and in your soul. And it will go against organized religion. It will, brethren. And when you start telling people that you'd rather be dead than not hear from God, they'll think you're crazy. But I'll tell you something right now. This Christmas season... This is all well and good and all fine. But folks, in January, I'll be just like I am today. And in February, and in March and April and May and June, July and August, the rest of them. This is, this is all good. But I won't be let down in January. A lot of Christians kind of hit the bottom after Christmas. It li it's like Christmas builds them up to something that doesn't last. Then there's something wrong. For anything that's from God will last. So if you get the right message from Christmas, which I'm preaching to you, God became a man. 
That's what Christmas is about. It's about the incarnation. That won't let you down. In January, it'll be just like it is today. Now today's the 21st day of December. This is what's called the winter solstice. The meteorologists tell you the shortest day of the year. He'll also tell you that tomorrow the days start getting longer. So the days will continue to get longer. This time next month it will have gained something like, what, 20 or 30 minutes? I don't know. Maybe something of that nature. I never could figure out why they didn't start the new year on the day after the winter solstice. See? Because tomorrow the days start getting longer. Why do they wait till January the 1st? You see, the world has its way of keeping time. God has his way of keeping time. Amen. Do you know what he said? The children of Israel, he said, don't, you, don't worry yourself right. one bit right. about when the day starts yeah. or the yeah. day stops. Right. Right. Yeah. He said, remember the time you came out of Egypt yeah. and the blood was applied to the doorpost and lentils. Yeah. He said, mark that down as the beginning of months. Yeah. In other words, he said, he said, don't set your calendar according to what you see in the heavens and according to the cycles of the earth. Set your calendar according to what you have between you and God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I think to myself, well, that's an amazing thing. It really is. Because when you think about it, it becomes very personal. My calendar started in 1973. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm just 35. I'm just a kid. I'm young. I'm a kid. I'm just 35 years old, brother. Man. Like a kid in a candy factory. Jumping up and down, praising God and shouting glory to God. 35, that's all I am. My old body may be 62, but I'm not. And you know something? I don't get older. Amen. I don't get older. I just get better in the Lord. Hope I grow a little bit. Amen. Some of you think, well, you're crazy, preacher. Hallelujah, glory to God, I am. I've decided I am crazy. I made up my mind the other day. I said, I am. I'm, about, I'm, I'm, I'm loony. But that's okay. I live a loony life. Crazy. And I want to get in my prayer closet, brother. I want to talk to the Lord. Father, use what I've said this morning. God, make yourself real, Lord, not through things, but through, through that, which is, that which Heavenly Father is spiritual and eternal. Not from that which is temporal and passes away, that has no lasting value, but that, Heavenly Father, when we look back and think of the birth of Christ, we, think, we say to ourselves, Lord, isn't that an amazing thing? Amazing. Was it that he was conceived in the beginning of months? My, my, my. Isn't that an amazing thought? That it's the beginning of time with Thee when life comes to us. God, we pray. That's what matters to You, isn't it, Lord? That in 1973, I got saved. Yes, thank You. That's when it started counting. Amen. And how many more in here this morning is so personal between You and them that it's not the date they were born in the flesh, it's that date they were born again. That's when You started counting. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. For Jesus' sake we ask it.